Australian students are falling behind the rest of the world, that's a fact. Now, for over a decade, our students have been in a state of decline in the PISA test, the Program for International Student Assessment. PISA test is a test given out by the OECD, the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, and it tests 15-year-olds in member and non-member nations in uh, maths, reading and science. Now, in 2003, there were four nations ahead of us in numeracy, but in 2012, there were 16 nations ahead of us. And it makes me wonder, what have we been doing wrong, or what have those other 16 nations been doing right? Now, all of our 15-year-olds sat PISA last year, and I'm honestly worried about where we're going to come as a nation. PISA results are an interesting way to get some insight to the calibre of the workforce that we can expect to come through in the next few years, and they're also a great reflection on how we've been educating our youth. Now, I'm sure you'll all agree that we want a scientifically literate society. We want a, a population which values reason and logic. A generation which is not scientifically literate or which shuns science is a scary concept when you think that life is getting ever more complicated and the world is getting more connected through powerful mediums like the internet. And I, I wonder, are we best preparing our youth of today to become the bright future of tomorrow? Now, often I find students are uh, ironically behaving like electrical current. They're following the path of least resistance. And what this means is they are choosing subjects which are easier to do and avoiding things like high-level maths or science. And the alarming thing is that this is often supported by the parents. But there's a few things that I've noticed which make me think that we could be on the tip of the iceberg for a uh, revolution in science education in Australia. But we need a cultural change uh, to be able to get there. Now, some years ago when I trained to be a science teacher right here at Charles Darwin University, and I imagine this is a story shared by many of my teacher colleagues, I came out of my course with a little more than a packet of whiteboard markers, a portable hard drive with a few basic PowerPoint files, and a bit of passion and energy. When a grand, brand new teacher graduates, they often have to generate all of their own uh, basic classroom support materials, including all their lessons, and that's relative to the subjects they get allocated in their first job. It could be a real problem if that teacher picks up a job in a school where the youth are quite um, disconnected from science and require significant efforts to re-engage them and to get them interested in a science education again. And uh, what I'm concerned about is that we are causing brand new teachers not to have the tools to success in the classroom. Now, when I um, think about the situation that our brand new teachers are put in, I think, gee, righto, we are about to be connected Australia-wide by the Australian Curriculum in Science, and that's going to make huge changes. Now, it should be seen as an opportunity to uh, standardised science education across Australia, but also to make it available to uh, the population in general. So we should be engaging our community through our children and em empowering, our, um, empowering our parents to take part in their child's science education. And what I want to do is to empower the, the teacher, to empower the student, to empower the parent, and therefore the whole community. Now, uh, my idea is, is this. I, I want brand new teachers to have access to an openly available set of resources free of restrictions. And that means no copyright, no fees, no membership, no login at all. A firm base from which to begin on the path of creation and inspiration. See, the, the, the problem is that when brand new teachers come out and they have to generate all these classroom support materials, it's an inefficient process. And they always have to search long and hard for practicals which are inspiring, but also they need constant reinforcement and checking with more qualified science educators to make sure what they're delivering is correct and compliant. This is an inefficient process. I'm imagining a firm base from where a teacher can begin, a, a single place where a teacher or a student or a parent can go where they will find an industry-linked science education which is curriculum compliant, an online interactive textbook and resource location, somewhere for educators and students to share and collaborate. 
I imagine a student going home and asking mum and dad for help with their science homework, but instead of the traditional set of questions, it's a, it's a, a practical. And mum, dad, brother or sister actually help that student gather data. So this resource that's online, this would be backed by hands-on inquiry-based practicals, which involve materials which are easy to procure and that are cheap to procure. And much of this would be available hard copy to the brand new teacher. I imagine graduating teachers receiving a box, the box, and inside the box is books, DVDs, uh, USBs with all their PowerPoints for the basic subjects, and practicals. The materials they need, the instructions, all in this one place. And it's just given to them. Now, I'd like to give you an example of a practical that you would find in such a box. Um, some time ago I was at a conference for science teachers and I was talking to a physics teacher. And he told me about a practical which was readily available on the internet, but somewhat underutilised and, uh, and unknown. And it's, um, it's called this mobile phone spectrometer, which is what I've got in my hand here. Um, now what a spectrometer does is it splits light up into its requisite wavelengths. So what that means is it takes light, like you can see here, and <clears throat> turns it into its different colours. Now, if I take the mobile phone spectrometer and I put it on the camera of my phone, like that, and then you just hold it up to your ordinary fluorescent light bulb, you'll actually see something, and that is that white light itself is not white, it's red, orange, green, and two shades of blue. And that's actually what's coming out of the white light in my house that I took a photo of there through this mobile phone spectrometer. Now, when students conduct a practical like this, it's an it's a amazing wow moment for them. For my whole life, white light was white, and white is not white. White is these powerful colours that are coming out. And you need to put something in the middle to actually open their eyes to what the real universe is like. And, and what you're doing is you're breaking down their understanding of the universe and you're rebuilding it from a scientific perspective. And that's powerful stuff. Now, the, the internet is full of materials like this. Hands-on inquiry-based practicals which don't require extensive setup or expensive scientific equipment. Activities which are inspiring and, and uh, eye-opening, uh, which don't care what your socioeconomic background is, how privileged your school is, or how much physics theory you actually understand, or how much English you speak. Just simply powerful and inspirational stuff. And what I do is I send my students home with a, a mission. This is their homework. They, they have to go and photograph the spectra, the colours coming out of lights at night time, um, around their, their houses and, and roads. And, and so if we look here, you'll notice um, this is a picture out on Lee Point Road. You'll see these orange lights here, which uh, you'll, you'll see in a number of locations in Darwin and across Australia, that light the road at night. And the reason they look orange is because they have different elements in them. They, they are releasing different colours of light. Now, when I hold my mobile phone spectrometer up to it, you'll note that uh, and that's it up the top there, that the spectra is different to that which I got out of the fluorescent light bulb. Now the reason for that is, is that these are high pressure sodium lamps. They contain different elements to the ordinary fluorescent light bulb. So when you pass electrical current through them, they release different wavelengths of energy. Um, and you see different colours. And So what you're doing is you're confirming the fact that there is a difference in the atom. So with this, piece of cut up cardboard, folded, with a bit of DVD inside it, you can take photos down to the atomic level. First time I hold this up, and I, I didn't use my camera, I just did that and, and had a look at the sodium light, and I thought, wow, I can see down to the atomic level this thing, I can, I can see evidence for the way I teach students the atom is. This actually directly links with the curriculum too. So you can take photos down to the atomic level with this bit of cardboard. Students know what's in it, they made it, they know there's no magic in it, it's science. 
And they love practicals like this. They, they take this stuff home, they talk to their parents about it, and then they'll come back to school the next day and they'll proudly show off their spectral photography in a sort of academic show and tell. So it's citizen science and STEM, and it's all beginning in the science classroom. Now, you all have your own mobile phone spectrometers today in your bags. I encourage you to go home and cut it up, fold it, and uh, find an old recordable DVD and stick it in there and take your own spectral photography. And there's a website on the front that'll uh, offer you more experiments and additional information if you're interested. What it's all about at the end of the day is finding these practicals, these light bulb moments, which break down a student's understanding of the universe and, and rebuilding it from a scientific perspective, opening their eyes to the wonders of science. It's about getting all of this stuff and putting it into one place and then giving all of that to the practical teacher that's just graduated so that they don't have to put any effort into finding these things. They're already ready to deliver to the students. Existing resource banks that are available to brand new teachers are disparate, restrictive, they're annoying to navigate, they're political administrative minefields and they're onerous to use. And the videos that we share with our students are often really old and outdated and they're covered in digital rights management and they're extremely difficult to share and this can be a real problem if for example you have a student that's not there or that you want to assign this video for homework and you want to watch them you want them to watch it at home and, and you can't do that because there's just one place you can play it and that's in the classroom these things need to change i want to stop reinventing the wheel I really want to stop the lifelong search for better materials and better practicals and start the lifelong search for knowledge and inspiration. I want to stop telling students to go out and buy an expensive textbook, which they'll use for a year or less. I want educational institutions, I want schools, I want industry and I want government agencies to get their resources, update them, and then put them online in one place, readily accessible. I want all of these tools, these lessons, all the groundwork that's already been done by many, many teachers put together and handed to a brand new science teacher, either during their course or straight after, so that they can concentrate their limited time and energy on generating inspiring classroom situations and experiences rather than generating all the basic lessons that they have to teach relative to the subjects they've been allocated at their school. The more we hinder science education in this country, the more we stop the progression of our society. We need to give brand new teachers the tools they need to succeed beyond mediocrity. And the only people that are going to uh, benefit out of this are the students. Now, I said that there needs to be no restrictions, but there, there would be one restriction, and that would be quality control. You can't just let anything go up online willy-nilly. So I imagine that there would have to be uh, moderators that would check that the materials that are going up are compliant and relevant and all that sort of thing. And this quality control would be out of the hand of government agencies, so it can't be hijacked for government agendas. It would be in the hands of science educators, which are motivated by the altruistic purpose of furthering science education in this nation. When the universe came into being, it was never intended that people should have to actually pay to understand it. It is the natural order of things and the correct and moral thing to do to make all of this information available to people for free. I just wish that we put some effort into making this readily available to brand new science educators so that then we can improve the quality of science education in this nation.